So uh, welcome to another Citizen Science Asia meet. So who we have here is Atma Wahab from Malaysia. Uh, he happens to be in town with a group of kids as part of the City Nature Challenge, which has just wrapped up over the weekend. So let's hear more about what he has to say. So welcome. Welcome to Hong Kong. Okay, thank you. Hope you had a good time. <laughs> yes, I did. So I guess what we want to just find out is maybe just do a quick self-intro. And what we want to understand is like, how did you get involved with Citizen Science? Okay, I'm basically the environmental education manager at the Habitat of Penang Hill. Yeah. We conduct environmental programs, education programs, and research. So then I found out about City Nature Challenge, being introduced by the colleagues at WWF Hong Kong. Then after hearing it, then we know that it's a good chance for us at the Habitat Penang Hill to get students to and also the common public to be involved in nature, to get them to be attached again to nature, which some mm -hmm. which is something that has been more and more being divided yes, uh, with, the, with the lifestyle now. Definitely. So we thought that City Nature Challenge is a good way of yeah, bringing people back to nature again. Getting them engaged again. Yes. Definitely. And, and um, so you were telling me earlier, so citizen science is a relatively new term for you as well, as for yes. me. Um, so how did you come about it and what's your understanding or definition of citizen science? Yeah, uh, I only heard about citizen science as, a, as an organization, which is just a few days ago. Uh, okay. But as an approach, I've heard it maybe less than a year. Right. Uh, as, as the citizen science work. But yeah, it, it is a good thing to get the local public to be involved in some sort of monitoring, some sort of, some sort of learning about the environment or what's happening in the surroundings. Yep. And there are actually, I think that there are a lot of options, a lot of ways that how we can, how we can engage with the public sure. in this sort of, sort of work. There's a big chance for us to, yeah, for everyone, for NGOs, for research institutions, to be involved in citizen science. And I've heard of this concept. Uh, they, do, they didn't use the name citizen science, yep. but they've been doing bird monitoring by one society called the Malaysian Nature Society. Okay. They've been doing city bird monitoring. Yep. So every year they just said, it's actually just like City Nature Challenge, but there's no challenge in it. They just said, okay, between this it's an date, monitoring, uh, right? yes, from this date to this date, go to the greenery in your area, behind your house, in your yep. park, in your gardens, just monitor the birds and just they'll give you a list, just tick what you see, how many, the numbers and everything. Yep. And they've been compiling compiling it year to year so that they can monitor how the how are the population of the right. birds in the That's urban cool. areas. Yes. Yeah, so and then they also, um, it can also be called citizen science, I think, for monitoring of migratory birds. There's also have been ongoing yep. in, in Malaysia. But uh, yeah, I think there are, as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of opportunities out there for, for organizations to use Sure. This, citizen, citizen okay. science. And, and what's your background? So, just want to focus in on the science aspect of citizen science. So, what's your background and what do you think of how citizens participate in the scientific process? My background is in wildlife management. I yep. have a PhD in elephant study. Right. Yeah. Very relevant here. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, citizen science is good, but, yeah, there's always a but. Yeah, sure, of course. You need to set clear definitions, clear criteria, right. clear do's and don'ts so that you you really get what you want. That's definitely. If, yeah. If not, then you'll have, you want to cut down your resources by, by having more people to help you doing the monitoring work. But if you end up having all the rubbish data in... Right, overhead then, on the data cleansing. Yeah, then you have more, you need yes. to have more time cleansing the data. Yeah. So the planning is important, I Definitely, think. Definitely, I agree with yeah. that, yeah. With that in mind, in terms of planning the project, how did you guys decide at the Habitat to start planning this project? How did you go about doing that? So City Nature Challenge is our first involvement in citizen science approach yeah. uh, in monitoring nature. So I think with this experience that I've had, it'll make us at the Habitat Pinah Hill we'll be able to think how can we use, how we, how, in what other 
what are the issues that we can engage citizen science sure. uh, in monitoring work, in research work that could be done. At the moment, we are also, you, I'm not sure whether it can be considered a citizen science, but we do it involve the public to help the habitat to set up uh, trekking trails uh, in okay. nature reserves. Right. So that's also how engaging the public to do something towards conservation. Yes. And at the same time, they learn about nature, they learn about the issues. And your data points to know where you should put the trails and things yes, as well. Yes. To avoid habitats or also to be able to yes. bring interest to habitats. Yes. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. And so I guess, and so this is the first time you've done a citizen science project in this yeah. context. Yes. And so how did you find the whole process? Given what you do, and obviously we talked about the benefits of it, was it fun? Was it enjoyable? Do you see sort of very positive um, contributions from the public? It is very positive because we could see that there are people out there with no biology background or no ecology background have the interest to take extra effort to yes. go out to photograph nature, yep. to record animals. Yeah, the interest is there. Mm -hmm. So we need to find ways to engage with these people, give them something that's workable, yep. not so hard, something that... Uh, that yeah, something, yeah, I think they, then they will feel the, the work that they're working on, the issue that they're working on is become more closer to them. Yes, definitely. Uh, then once once they feel that, then they'll, let's say it's a nature program, nature mm -hmm. or environmental issues. When they're involved, then they will fo they feel more engaged. Yeah. Then they feel more attached to nature. There's an understanding, there's relevance, right? Uh, yeah, they, uh, then, they, then they feel that they're relevant to the issue. Sure. And then they'll take extra effort to yeah, to overcome the issues or to help. Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. So I understand, obviously, you're in Hong Kong this week. As I mentioned, you brought some kids over. So yes. can you give us a little bit of history? How, how did this happen? Okay. So during the inter-secondary school challenge that we had in February, so we had groups of four students, four students in one group to compete in Penang to, uh -huh. in one day to find out which group could get the highest observation. Right. And this group from the Chungling Secondary School managed to get few thousands of observations. That's amazing. In one day. In one day. Four people. Wow, yeah. Yes. So I brought him in Hong Kong and I'll introduce them to you later. Okay, great. It'll be good to say hi to them, yes. Yeah. And so how was this trip so far? Yeah, first, <laughs> this trip, <laughs> if you check, the first, the guy with the highest observation uh -huh. on City Nature Challenge guy is not a guy from Hong Kong. Right, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> He's our student from Penang That's Island. That's amazing. Yes. So Hong Kong did a good job by bringing you guys over and <laughs> yes, contributing yeah. to the Hong well, Kong project. Penang is helping Hong Kong to yes, win. that's right. The irony of that. But you know yeah. what, it's all good for everyone, right? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Right. definitely. So I guess um, you mentioned obviously the whole potential issue with um, data validity. So as as obviously mentioned, it's about the planning process. Yes. What else is there? Obviously, as a researcher um, by trade, there's this whole debate about scientists not liking necessarily what citizens are doing because they don't really trust it. So what's your context of that? What can you do aside from sort of the collaboration on the project plan design? What else can we do more to sort of convince these other scientists about the data validity? Is there anything more we can do? I think we can involve these people, involve scientists. First, scientists need to be from the basis first. Of course. They need to form the baseline. And so this, it's working with them, not against yeah, them, yes, right? Yes, we need to work with them. Let these scientists to do the planning work to, and then together we can identify the objectives of the target of each project. Then we can find out which are the, which are the angles yes. that the public, the citizen science could help in. That's yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, I think that's workable. Got it, got it, okay. And so now that you guys done this for one year, do you think you're gonna continue doing this? In the future? Yeah, yes, I think certainly yes, we will continue. Did you guys find it enjoyable and easy enough to set up or what were the challenges with the project getting it set up? There are challenges but then I, I, I think after having the first experience being involved in City Nature Challenge, we basically know more how to handle it in the future. Great. And would you recommend other cities also get involved as well? Oh, yes, of course. I think because not many cities in, in Asia is being involved in That's City right, six Nature Challenge. That's right, six years. So yeah. Uh, yeah, there's only six. Yeah, I think should 
more should be involved next yeah. year, I hope. And if you look at the ranking over the weekend, I think um, Klang Valley has been up there. They yes. have massive volumes. Hong Kong had num- yes. managed a number of CCs. Yes. Unfortunately, your ace team was in Hong Kong helping us. <laughs> yes. But I mean, in general, looking across the six cities, I think we did pretty well. So it'd be amazing to see more cities get involved, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's okay. great, that's great. Well, okay, well, I know you got to run for a plane. <laughs> yes. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so yeah, much. Okay, Hope you enjoyed yeah, Hong okay, Kong. Good, good, Thank yeah. you. Thank you.